Hello world. Today I'm talking everything bathroom. Bathroom trends in 2022 that is. Three things you should do and one you shouldn't. Japan D. Plants. Color of the year. And removable wallpaper. Stay tuned. Okay. So trends, they come and go, change every year. Do they really have any impact in our bathrooms? A little bit. They do. And sometimes it's great to grab those trends and sometimes not so much. I mean, after all, we are designing bathrooms that last 10, 20, 30 years before they get redone. But one of the biggest things that has affected bathroom trends, just like everything else over the last two years, was the pandemic. Um, I'm going to step back and talk about design in the grand sense a bit first. So leading up to 2020, design was really getting more simple and simple, uh, modern, clean. That's because our lives were so busy outside of the home. When we came home, we wanted a place where our brain could stop, where our lives could stop, where we could just do a little bit of rebuilding before we went back out again. Well, all of a sudden, um, life outside the house stopped and we were inside and these cool, modern, sleek interiors weren't reassuring to our soul. So we have started bringing warmth back into our design. Um, and you're really going to see that has affected in the bathroom trends. But it's a little bit interesting because there's a couple things still happening. One, bathroom is still affected with um, health and well-being. So we still want it to feel clean and crisp and healthy not medicinal, but healthy, clean, and white is very much that color. But the other thing is, you know, we do want to warm our whole interiors up. So that is also coming into the bathrooms. Uh, but bathroom white in a bathroom trend will always be there and it's always good. We can always add color with towels and art and things like that. But you're gonna see in my discussions, yeah, pandemics affected our bathroom design too. So the very first place you could see this was Japandi. Japandi is the mix of the minimalism of the Scandi design that we've had for the last, yeah, I'm going to even say 10 years, mixed with the wabi-sabi of Japanese design. So it's more warm. It's warm and neutral. Um, rattan and wicker, you're going to see a lot of that. It's calm and cozy and enveloping. You're going to see much more of the handcrafted, rougher textured things. Definitely uh, the Japanese influence of a natural, bringing in um, elements of plants and life. And then the other thing is this isn't just decor. This is an entire lifestyle. In this first picture here, you can see it with the rough hewn counter and the wood vanity. It's still sleek and minimal. However, it's warmed up with the texture and the woods. Next picture. Again, it's sleek and it's modern, but that whole ledge insert being done with the wood has really warmed this space up. And now this one, this one's warmed up with the contrast of the black and the warmth and the light, the scandy colors of the light wood on the cabinet. But this is very much what we're talking about in the new decor. It's not as Italian modern as we've seen in the past. Plants in the home uh, has been around for the last little bit, but honestly, they have been trendy. People putting their fig leaf tree in because that's what they see in Pinterest. Or, you know, before that it was ferns. But people weren't putting green plants in their home for the feel or the warmth or how it made it enveloped them. They were putting it in their home because it was trendy. Well, now we're back to putting it in because it makes us feel good. And the bathroom is actually a great spot. It gets moisture. It gets steam. Ferns love it. Uh, one here, obviously, it's hanging in the shower or ne right next to. Uh, the other spot, it's just outside the window, but it's still drawing you in. It makes you feel very tropical, even if you aren't in the tropics. And then this last one I love. It's got the warmth and the drama of the black that I talked about in a previous episode. Um, link somewhere up here. And But it's got the warmth of the plants. It's got the richness of the golds and the coppers. This is a space that makes you feel very warm and secure. Next trend, wallpaper. 
specifically removable wallpaper. There's a lot you can do with it now. As these two show, um, you can do them on a half wall. I love these, I think they're little monkeys above the basins, or you can be totally dramatic in a powder room. Um, this one with a very traditional print and kind of a slightly uh, jazzed up uh, art piece there on the wall, but with the gold, this is a very busy print, but in a powder room, this is just fabulous. Two more. How about this pink bathroom? It's straight out of an art deco, but done with a very uh, oriental style, Persian maybe, uh, art on the wall. And then on the other side, it's a very, what we're calling the new traditional, uh, very sleek and clean, but with those ornamentation of the paneling on the bottom and the that soft metals tones, that's a beautiful room that you'd feel very spa-like, but it's warmed up now with that removable wallpaper. And pattern can be really soothing. It can make you feel calm, even though it's busy, when it's used all over. Don't just put it in one little spot. Then it kind of looks odd. You might as well just have some paintings. This example is a great example of taking the black and white, almost farmhouse style from the last 10 years and warming it up. Uh, very simple to do with an existing space by putting that wallpaper on the upper part of the wall here that looks like ferns. So we've incorporated now the white that we want for cleanliness, the black that gives it some pop and some contrast and some interest and removable wallpaper with plants. So we've incorporated a whole bunch of the trends all in one bathroom here. And I think this is a bathroom anybody would be happy to use. And now for the controversy, I'm saying down to the color of the year in a bathroom. Why? If it's the color of the year and it's in all the magazines and even like this picture right here, they're showing it on the wall. What's wrong with it? Well, almost everybody has versions of a gray green. And this has become because we're coming out of the era with all the gray paints. And yes, gray is dated and I'm really glad it is because it wasn't an inspiring color. It was very much the calm, cool, um, make your life a sanctuary because it was too busy elsewhere. But now we're inside and we realize that there's not a lot of life in gray. So in response, the paint companies have come out with their gray green version as a way of taking a color and being able to mix it with your gray spaces and warm them up. Fabulous. Well, a few did blue, much better, but this sounds great until you hold these paint colors up behind your head. Nobody, nobody looks good with green against their face. I'm sorry, it's not flattering. You go into a bathroom with green walls and you put your makeup on, you come out, it doesn't look good. So don't use these colors of the years on your walls and the bathrooms, folks. I don't care how much you like the color. Don't do it. What you can do is use these colors on the vanities. Keep the color down away from your face. Keep it where it's not reflecting in the mirrors. So the vanity is probably the best spot. I love this vanity right here. It's kind of an art deco, kind of art modern. It's got some zip with the black contrast and behind it, it has the very soothing pale blush paint. So this is a bathroom that has style and has the trend color of the year on the bottom. So it feels fresh and modern, but it has a very flattering color reflecting behind your head of that paint. So this would be a great bathroom to go in. And here are two more examples. Again, doesn't matter on the style or the trend. It can be traditional, it can be shaker, but you're using the color and keeping it down away from your face. I know I'm breaking the rule a little bit on the second one, but it's still not reflecting on your face. Next trend that I give a thumbs up, modern farmhouse. Modern farmhouse will always work because farmhouse is still basically at the heart and the core of it is white or light. And that is so nice in a bathroom. So what makes it now? What makes it on trend? You're taking the farmhouse and you're using cleaner lines, glossy finishes, uh, less ornamentation, less fussy signs and writing. Get rid of all of that. It's still very much a neutral palette. It can be, this picture's more uh, black and white, but you can have the tans and the tones. 
mix some shiny metals like the golds here. It is less rustic and minimal a pattern. Here's a perfect example. This actually is kind of a farmhouse look, but we also have incorporated the sleeker lines of the Japandi and the rustic in the blinds. Oh, kind of like my own here, the wicker and the rattan. Here's one with wood vanities, and that's a really nice trend. Um, make sure they blend with other wood that you have elsewhere in your house or your wood floors. If you've got, you know, golden oak floors, don't be mixing with, you know, a blue gray vanity in the bathroom just because you like the wood tone. But this is a great example of keeping it sleek and minimal, warmed up with the wood, lovely farmhouse. This one I really like because you just brought it in as an accent with the stool. It's a great way of getting your style, your farmhouse, but keeping it warm, but still having a basic white bathroom that feels clean. Hope this gave you a few ideas of ways you can use bathroom trends in 2022 in your own bathroom, whether you're just giving it a facelift or whether you're gonna do a full renovation. And if you get stuck and are trying to figure out what it's gonna cost, there's a link down below of a little free download that will give you some ideas of three different levels of cost download it, check it out. It might help you decide what you're going to do to your home in 2022. Thanks a lot. Bye.